What I want to do now is go through the cleaning procedure uh, of the machine using our cleaning kit that we have available. The uh, Creators cleaning kit uh, will come with the parts that you see here. Uh, there's two different size pads depending on which kit uh, you get. One is the 12 inch diameter pad which is for the smaller 12 inch diameter kettles. These are custom made for us. The uh, material that's used to make this pad is similar to the uh, material that's used for cleaning Teflon pan, pad, uh, pans. Uh, so it's very friendly to the, our, our surfaces of our, our pans, the nickel finishes on our pan. The uh, pack will come with five pads which are reusable. Uh, when you use it, uh, and I'll demonstrate how to do that, when you're done you can rinse it out, let it dry, and then you can use it again. They'll last a long time. Uh, the pack does come with uh, five of these inside it. Uh, it'll also come with some high temperature gloves for cleaning to pr protect your hands from some of the cleaning products that we're going to use inside the, uh, the kettle. You'll get this large tub here to capture liquid when we go to dump it, uh, the cleaning solution. It'll capture all of that inside that tub. You'll get a, a canister of our inside kettle cleaner which I'll show you how to use that. It's a powder type product. You can see it here. The outside cl kettle cleaner which is used to clean the outside surfaces of the pan. That's more of a pasty liquidy type uh, consistency and I'll show you how to use that. You'll get the stainless steel cleaner which is the cleaner used to clean all of the cabinet uh, parts in the machine. You also get a little pad, a small pad, which will allow you to clean the sides of the pan and the outside of it. Uh, it it's also made of that same material that's used for Teflon pans, so it's very safe for the uh, finish of the pan. You also get a little brush here, which will allow you to clean up the, the drive shaft connector, which I'll show you how to do. Uh, and there's also an instruction uh, sheet that lists all of the, uh, the parts too, so if you need to order any of the uh, cleaning supplies, you can go ahead and do that. So the first thing you want to do is you want to let the kettle cool down. You don't want to clean the kettle when it's still at that hot temperature that we were just popping at. You want to let it cool down to about room temperature. Uh, and you don't want to throw ice cold water in a hot kettle or ice in a kettle because you will damage the pan. It'll, it'll cause it structurally to, to start warping on you. So you do want to let it cool down and use warm water in the pan. So the first thing you want to do is go ahead and take your cleaning gloves. I'm going to go ahead and put these on, show you how to use this kit. And again, let the kettle cool down to room temperature. I'm going to go ahead and remove this drop shelf just by pulling in on these tabs will allow me to pull that drop shelf out. I'm going to take my cleaning tub, set it down inside the cabinet of the machine. I'm going to lift the cover up here. First thing I'm going to do is go ahead and remove the stirrer blade because we'll have to uh, place the pad on the bottom. There's a pin here that holds the blade in place. Once you remove that pin, you can remove your blade. And then the first thing you want to do is take some of that inside kettle cleaner, take a small scoop, and put a couple tablespoons inside the pan. Then take one of your cleaning pads, set it down in the pan, and then go ahead and put your stir blade back in place. Now we don't have to use the, the pin to hold it down because we're just going to do this cleaning procedure once so once we dump it we'll be pulling the blade out. So just set your blade in place on top of that pad. Then we're going to take a couple of cups of water. You just want enough water to cover the bottom surface of that pan. You don't want to overfill the kettle because you put too much water in there. When we turn our agitator on, if there's too much water in there, it's going to allow all that water to spill inside the cabinet. 
So you just want enough to cover the bottom surface of that pan. So I can see the, the water starting to cover the top of that pad. So now what you want to do is go ahead and turn on your agitator. You're going to want to turn your exhaust on too. And then we want to turn the heat on. You'll see it lock in and it's going to show the temperature of the kettle. Right now it's at 75 degrees. We want to allow that to get up to about 190, 200, right before it, it hits that boiling point. Once it hits that temperature, we're going to go ahead and shut the kettle heat off and close the lid. Uh, and then what's going to happen is that, that hot water and steam inside there is going to start steaming the inside of the kettle. And we're going to let it run for about 15 minutes. After 15 minutes, we will uh, uh, shut the agitator off and, and then dump that solution out. So let's let it heat up to about 190 degrees, and then I'll, I'll show you what we need to do. As you can see, we're at about 178 degrees right now. You can see the steam being generated uh, inside the kettle. So when you hit about, like I said, about, one, about 190, at 190 we can shut the heat off because there's enough residual heat there which will carry it up to the boiling point. And, and at that point we want to, 190, I just shut it. We want to close this lid to allow it to steam and clean the inside of this kettle. So I'm going to go ahead and close that lid. We're going to leave the agitator run for about 15 minutes. After 15 minutes, we'll go ahead and open it up and dump that solution out, and I'll show you how to do that. So let's let the kettle clean here for about 15 minutes. So the kettle's been steaming for about 15 minutes. So what we want to do now is go ahead and open our lid up. Kettle's still going to be hot, so be careful. We're going to shut our agitator off. And at this point, we're going to start removing the uh, blade and the pad and placing it down into our tub over here. So go ahead and dump, dump it slightly to where you're able to remove the stir blade. Place it down in your tub. And then before we dump the solution, we want to take that pad out and place it down in the tub. What that's going to do is when we go to dump the solution, the pad's going to absorb some of that water and prevent it from splashing all over the place. So let's go ahead and remove that pad. We're going to place it down in the tub. And then I'm going to dump, go ahead and dump my cleaning solution down into the tub. As you can see, that kind of absorbs that water and prevents it from splashing all over inside the cabinet. Now, you can go ahead and take your little pad here, use that, that hot cleaning solution here to clean out the rest of the pan, the side, and kind of finish up the uh, cleaning process uh, that we started here. Okay. Now we want to go ahead and remove the cover pieces and the shaft here. First thing I'm going to do is release this uh, cover lift arm from the cover here by removing the clip. Set it down in your tub. Then there's a clip that holds the shaft onto this connector. Again, set that in your tub. That'll allow the shaft to pull straight down and allow you to remove the cover and you can place inside your tub here. You also have that little brush that I had showed you earlier you can use that to clean the inside of this connector here. And that's especially important if you're doing sugar corn, because uh, sugar corn will build up on that, the sugar will build up on that shaft. And we want to make sure that we have that spring action of that shaft. Otherwise, if it gets stuck in the up position, it's not going to uh, turn that stir blade. So you can use your cleaning solution down in here, the hot cleaning solution, to get up inside that connector to clean up any of the stuff that's built up in there, whether it's sugar or oil in there. Make sure that area is clean. At that point, you can take your tub with all your parts, take it to the sink, use that cleaning solution to clean up those parts, rinse everything off thoroughly, and then bring it and reinstall it in the pan. 
I'm going to take this to the sink to clean this up and then I'll show you how to install everything back into the pan. So I've cleaned off all of those parts. The, the only thing before we start uh, installing everything is you want to take a damp rag and just kind of wipe out the inside of the pan, get some of the, the residual cleaning uh, uh, product out of there. Once you get it all wiped up, then we can go ahead and, and put everything together. So the first thing you do want to do is take your shaft, slide it through your cover. When you set your cover in place, make sure you line up the oil tube to go through the oil discharge hole there on the cover. Slide your shaft back up. Take your pin. Make sure you line up the hole with the slot in the connector. Snap that in. That'll hold the shaft. Then we can take the clip for the cover lift. Go ahead and slide the cover lift down over the cover center there and get the clip in place. Then we can go ahead and put our stir blade back into our pan. And then use the clip to secure it to the, the post, the pan center. Okay. Now, the outside kettle cleaner I had mentioned is more like a paste. And what you do is take a damp rag, put a little bit of that uh, outside kettle cleaner on your rag, and then go ahead and work it onto the pan. It's kind of like a, a wax or a polish. It does have a little pumice in it, a little, a little bit of abrasive, but it's, it's not going to damage the finish. Once you get it all on that, that surface there, you want to leave it there let it dry up. It'll haze over a little bit, at which point you'll take another damp rag or a dry rag, and I should say, and then buff that out, and that'll clean the outside of the pan. So let it haze up here a little bit, and then we'll come back and, uh, and buff it out. Once that outside kettle cleaner is kind of hazed over on the outside, take a, a, a dry cloth and kind of just buff that out. You can see how, how it's cleaned up the outside and polished it up. And make sure you get all of it off. Once you get all that outside kettle cleaner on there, uh, buffed off, at that point the kettle's clean. Then we're going to want to go ahead and clean the rest of the, uh, the cabinet and the, and the machine. Stop. You want to make sure you remove any popcorn that was left in the cabinet. Obviously take that all out of the cabinet there. There is a perforated screen that has handles that you can remove. You want to make sure you clean this all off so that the holes in this perforation don't get plugged up. This is where the hot air gets forced up through these holes through the corn to keep the corn nice and, and dry. So you want to make sure you wipe this all down and get any of that corn uh, so it's not plugging up the holes. You can take the, re the remaining stuff that's left in this cabinet here and just kind of sweep it all into this clean out drawer. Once you do that, you could take your clean out drawer, take that to the garbage, and empty that out, wipe it all down. I'm going to go ahead and take that to the garbage, and I'll be right back. I've cleaned out my clean out tray. I'm going to set that off to the side here. Then we have our stainless steel cleaner, which you can spray on all the stainless steel surfaces of the machine. Uh, actually, I like spraying it on the towel and then you can use that to wipe up all of those surfaces. Also on the inside of the cabinet you can clean up all of those corner pieces and the rest of the cabinet.
I'm going to go ahead and put my machine back together here, put my clean out drawer in place, and take my screen, hold it by the handles, send it down in the cabinet. You can take a damp rag, maybe with some mild detergent or some soap, to clean up the glass uh, of the machine on the inside of the cabinet and the outside. Once you get the glass clean, we can go ahead and take our drop shelf. If you need it to wash it up, obviously you can remove this, take it to the sink to clean it. Set it back in place. And then the last thing would be the doors. The plexiglass doors are, you can lift them off, to remove them for cleaning, take them to the sink. Just use some uh, warm water and some soap. Don't use anything abrasive on the door because you will scratch it. So, so just some mild soap and, and uh, warm water will, will clean the doors up really well. At that point, your mach machine is clean and ready for the next day. The only other thing I want to touch upon is the filter that's inside the machine. Now, it's not something that you're going to clean on a daily basis. The filter is a, a removable, disposable filter. Once it gets saturated, at that point you want to go ahead and, and remove it and clean the housing and replace it. You'll notice there are several layers here along with a thin layer of charcoal. Once this filter gets saturated, you want to go ahead and remove it. You can throw that away, take your housing, wash it out thoroughly, and then replace it with a new filter. When you insert that filter, you want to make sure you have it such that the charcoal is going to go nearest the intake of that blower. So make sure you install it correctly. And then go ahead and set your filter back in place. Now that filter really, as far as how often you're going to replace that, really depends on the usage of your machine. Uh, but basically what you want to do is kind of keep an eye on it, at least the first couple of times, kind of determine when you're going to need to replace it. Once it gets saturated and you start seeing some oil uh, dripping out of there, you want to take it back about a week. So if it's, it's about at the eight week mark when you see it dripping, then you know about every seven weeks you want to go ahead and replace that filter.